Yehova Malak, Ola Malamad, Yehova Malak, Yami Rakis, Yehova Gadol, Makarian Theos, Yehova Erdonai, Yehova Elohim, Kurios Theos Pantacreta, Kurios Theos Pistos, El Et Yehova, El Emuna Yehova, Ibas Leon Kurios, Otios, O Pantacreta, Basilios, Basilion, Kai Kurios, Kurion, Yehova Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal, Yehovah Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gebura, El Elohim Israel, Jesus Christos, Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion, Kurion Nimohagion Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol Gebura, Kun Kise as Olam At, Yehovah Ishe Malkam, Yehovah Shama. Zan Logan Ogar Tautios, Dolas Desmios and Despotes Isus Christos, Kurion, 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 Hagion, 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 Derek Emunabakar, Meshvat Shava, The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling, this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sitkenu, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Understanding the power when we reside in the word of the Lord of our God. When we make Yehovah Elohim to be our residence on this earth, what a great things we have for God the Father to perform in the vigor and valor of His energy. Fearing no evil, fearing no death, because nothing can separate us from the love of Christ Jesus, O Lord of a God, which abideth in us forever. So we have some of the examples for us to learn. As such, have. The good seed, if the word of the Lord of God has been sowed, how we surrender ourselves to change our character, not just hearing, but surrendering. And how we obey, how we grow up, how we in return become that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord of God. As Genesis chapter 26 in verse number 13, we look how Isaac was being blessed and then how he became mighty and great. And all the time, whenever we look in the Bible, it teaches to us, joining as disciples, growing up into grammatias. That's the principal theme of the Bible. And any fortification or anything that which is there, which you need to enjoy on this earth in the power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, or you have to hinder it, or you have to have your things pertaining in Galatians chapter 5. These are the people who are going to inherit the kingdom of God, and these are the people who will not. There also we have a lesson for us to understand the simple things you have to join as disciples. Without joining as disciples, you cannot get or you cannot inherit anything what the word of Lord God absolutely demands. So dear brethren, today we shall learn some of the things as Lord God the Holy Ghost has prepared and kept for us on today's date, particularly beginning with Exodus chapter 15 
and then we come back as Lord God, the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of His glory. So prior to that, in the privacy of our priest, we in confession of our sins to rebound. Let's come back and learn the mind of Christ. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace of the Lord to learn the word. We pray, Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten and challenge us by these words and make up our lives to understand the real purpose for which cause our captors are alive to breathe on this earth so that every thought of you, every word of you, every iota and carrier of you could be honored through our lives and make sure that we are the obedient ones for you all the days of this life on this earth. So, Father, we commit everything into the mighty hands as we study these things. We pray, Lord God, the Holy Ghost would enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. Over here in this great song of Exodus chapter 15, we have some lessons to be learnt. He says, Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The Hebrew word over here is Ga'e, Ga'e, which is called to be August, August. That means, in everything what God the Father has done for us, he is going to erect a structure which is going to give to others to look and to have a great exclamation of Ave, of inspiration. That's the word August. Because over here, dear brethren, the pictographical representation of these words, they teach to us up to what extent the impact would be upon them when they would believe upon the Lord. So, what we find over here for us in Exodus chapter 15 in verse 1, it says, Triumphed gloriously. The Hebrew word over here is Ga'a, or Ga'eb, Ga'eb, or Ga'a. It meant to say, in the pictographical representation, that which could be exalted when you have been lifted up. So here we have been given this great privilege to understand that every breath of our life we need to lift up triumphantly the word of God. So here he says, For he hath triumphed gloriously. Over here in this incident he is dividing a righteous and a he has seen and he has taught the lesson. Enough is the evil you have for that day. But it is God the Father who goeth before you, who searcheth out your enemies and is going to make your path straight. So do not worry. So wear upon the entire panoply of the Lord of our God and fight the Lord's battle. So for that reply, he is going to give an answer. He is going to praise the Lord. He says, Lord, you have triumphed gloriously. And the word triumphed gloriously, ga'a, ga'a, it has been used twice. And it meant to say the structure what you have erected in me, when the people would look, we will no longer give an occasion to the enemies of God to blaspheme. We no longer will make the enemies of Lord of our God to open up their mouth, as we read yesterday from Lamentations 2.16. Because enemies of Lord God are constantly waiting to open up their mouth and blaspheme the Lord. But over here, we have been looking that we shall not give an occasion to the enemies of God, neither in any sense, but rather looking upon this August, the word which has been translated for triumphant gloriously, Ga'a, Ga'a, which would make us to understand that we are having that great proud and prideness that only Yehovah Elohim shall be the majestic, shall be the glorious one, shall be the triumphant one, shall be the august of us. That's what every believer has to become in the Lord. Because of this great unique privileges of the church which have given for us. In the completed can of scripture what we are enjoying on this earth. And the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost which has been given for us. Whenever God the Father could look into us, he should say, These are the august believers of mine. Because in you, Christ, the structure of our Lord of our God should be formed, should be enumerated, should be formed in you. That's what we find the word in Galatians 4.19, Till Christ could be formed in you. For that cause I am taking this birth pangs. Summorphe. So when Christ's structure is formed in you, then you will understand the importance when the fallen angels and all the angels which have been rubbernecking their necks they want to look upon and see what exactly is you. Being Christ formed in you, the hope of glory. And yet you are going to walk in the midst of this powers and crooked nation generations by holding forth the word of the Lord of a God. 
shining as light luminaries and making them to realize that Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God alone, shineth and reigneth forever and forever. So these are the things what we learn over here, dear brethren. He is triumphed gloriously. So, Ga'a, Ga'a, he is the majestic, he is the one who reigneth, he is the one who dealeth with the things pertaining to the word of God forever and forever. So now on the reply of this Red Sea being divided asunder, he gives us first form in you, Christ. Make it appear of him in you. If God the Father should be triumphant gloriously in the midst of this people, first you should see that Christ is formed in you, conforming to the image of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that's why today many people don't understand the importance of conforming to the image of Christ. And as we have been scheduling that from 30 to 60 to 60 to 100 fold of the fruit which should, which should come according to that parable of the sower of the seed, 0 to 30 is what again like a rolled gold. 30 to 60 is what like just gold, it's Christ. And 60 to 100 is pure gold, that is God the Father. And from 30 to 60 we read, if you're growing up 30 to 40, it is just like the milk. 40 to 50 it is the bread. <coughs> 50 to 60 it is the word of God being taught. And even till then, you haven't triumphed gloriously yet. When Christ God the Father has been formed in you, Matthew 5, 48 has been perfected in you. Then we can tell you have been triumphed gloriously and that is not being done after you die. As Apostle Paul teaches in Philippians 3, and people would misquote the scriptures and they would say for you, that till Christ could be formed, I have not attained, so I will attain that only when I die. No, he's talking about spiritual resurrection. The bodily resurrection will happen later on, but spiritual resurrection he has attained. And that spiritual resurrection is what we call triumphed gloriously. And today, dear brethren, many of the people are not able to realize how Christ our Lord of our God should be triumphed gloriously. The two words, ga'ab, ga'ab. And people don't understand the importance of these translations, what they have lost. The first one, triumphed referring to Christ, the second one referring to God the Father. First you have to attain 60% and then from 60 you have to go to 100%. And that's what you have to form in you first to this world, the twofold ministry of, the, 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 twofold, the twofold purpose of Lord God the Holy Ghost, we write. First in this flesh conforming to the image of Christ, second, the things which Satan revolted against Lord God in Isaiah chapter 14, here we are, to build them up to realize the importance. That when we have been matching to the likeness of God the Father, he would make us to sit in his throne. So we have these twofold things of the purpose of Lord God the Holy Ghost given to us, and we are not even able to realize these words were spoken long back by Moses. He said, triumphed gloriously. And though we are now in the completed canon of scripture and every believer is having equal privilege and equal opportunity to speak through their lives, it is not just the words. It is that which every action that we take place in this life. Therefore, we have been asking you, it is not just hearing the word of God, but be the doers. Doers is surrendering and completely obeying to the will of God. And yet, dear brethren, much of the Christendom has been wasted upon silly, stupid thoughts of vain grace. They are frustrating the grace of God. They are using the grace of God in vain standards. And what exactly should be erected in you, Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, has not been erected, though you have been, been believers for over 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. Therefore, we are reading yesterday in First Peter chapter 2, desiring the sincere milk. You know, the sincere milk is nothing but pure milk, unadulterated milk. Drinking pure milk for one month is better than drinking unadulterated milk for 20 years. Pure milk has that effect. Pure milk will work out in you. Pure milk will once again build back your body. Though you may drink adulterated milk for years together, it will not work out. Because in everything you will find compromise, compromise, compromise. 
And while you're compromising today in the presence of God the Father, you have to understand when he did not allow Moses to enter into the land flowing with milk and honey, he did not spare him. How much more it would be for us to understand the importance when we don't honor his word above his name. So dear brethren, this word Ga'ab, when he's been telling triumphant, first you have to erect a structure of Christ in you and looking in you Christ, the world should get an exaltation. They should give an away of expression in their face. That's the greatest miracle. It is not the people who think the one who had legs, now who didn't have legs, now he got legs, or the one from the womb who did not have legs, now he got the legs, or the second category of the people, right from his womb, he did not have the eyes, but now he got the eyes, and that's a great miracle. That's only the physical part. We want to have to look into the spiritual part. A great array of inspiration to the people, looking in your Christ. And that's only 60%, dear brother, and you have still let more another to reach. You have to reach another 100%. From 60 to 100, you have the four stages to go up again now. Then how much more you have to be pure and clear in the sight of God? So here he claims, Moses sang the song to children of Israel, this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously, Ga'eb, Ga'eb. He had triumphed gloriously. Didn't he appear for them in the fire of cloud, in the fire of pillar? Didn't he appear for us in the form of flesh, the word which became flesh and dwelleth among us? And everything he triumphed gloriously. So he wants in us also to form Christ. He wants in us also to conform to the likeness of God the Father. As the word became flesh, and now we the flesh, after believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, should conform to his word, and we should appear for him while he are yet alive on this earth, to be triumphed gloriously in Christ. We have to do that now, not after we die. So in this flesh, the only tough work what we have right now is to get every thought into captivity for Christ. It's just not enough to get every thought into captivity for Christ, but it is more concerned for us now in the church age to spend our time in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and go on to grow from milk to bread, from bread to meat. And looking upon the time, we should be the people who would communicate the things which have been told before the foundation of the world, Matthew thirteen thirty-five, And John sixteen twenty-five and 29, he said, the time is going to come, I no longer communicate with the parables, but I'm going to tell the things of the pertaining to Christ and the kingdom of God plainly. And every believer now, he has to be a time of preaching about these things pertaining to the kingdom of Christ, pertaining to the mystery doctrine of the church age. Plainly, robustly, confidently, dogmatically. You know, there is a passage for us in Matthew chapter 13, which teaches about these tares and Wheat, Zizania, the word what we have been used. Open your Bible to Matthew chapter 13. And they would ask this passage and the explanation of this parable in chapter 13 when we have these words particularly talking about in verse number 36 it has to be. When he said he's going to teach to them the things plainly before the foundation of the world and they come now and the multitude into your house and they are asking, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. So he answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. That means being sent by the Lord of a God. And what is that good seed? That is called to be sincere word of God. No adultery in that. The good seed is nothing but proper exegeomai, proper exegetical standards, what today pulpits are lacking in and around the world. The entire Christendom has been failure now. They are either replacing their emotions, they are either replacing the sheer arts of talks, they are either replacing which they call for themselves the experience of the talk, but they are not coming to replace and to teach that which is exact demand of the word of the Lord of a God. They only demand what the word of Lord God is all about. They are not able to teach that. 
So here we find the good word of God has been sent by Lord of a God. And the word good over here is kalas, that which is beautiful, that which is excellent, that which is handsome. And what can be beautiful, excellent and handsome apart from the great beauty of my Lord of a God being exalted in the life of the believers when being told to look what exactly is the expounding of the scriptures. You know, one verse we have for us over here in Luke chapter 24 in verse number 48, it has to be the last few verses. He talks about over here to teach. Particularly, it has to be in verse 45, not 48. Then opened he their understanding. What is the word opened? It's a combination of a compound word, dia, followed by the word called as agnonia. Again, anogia, not agnonia, anogia. So, dia upon plus anogia. It meant to say, that's the male which opens up the womb of a mother which has been closed matrix. So, it is just dividing asunder or to open thoroughly the eyes and the ears of the people so that they can understand the things clearly. That's what here he says. The good seed is going to give them, that is Kalos, beautiful, handsome seed, is going to make their understanding to open up so that they could sincerely desire the word of God. <coughs> and they would now look and understand if it is not the word, then the church is not working. They would clearly come back to the senses. The church is a classroom. The pastor teacher is the dean. Every believer is a professor to the fallen angels. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> So here we have these words. Till Christ could open the understanding, they couldn't realize. So the good man opens the seed to understand the word of God. The seed is again callous, the word of God, the mind of Christ. So here it says to them, he answered them and said, He that is the good seed <laughs> excuse me, is the son of man, and the field is the world. And today, dear brethren, we are fed up with the men who have been teaching about the worldly standards in our pulpits. So the field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the kingdom of, are the children of the wicked one. So here we need to look and understand these things, dear brethren. The good seed, the good wheat, it will look like that. Zizania are the seeds, they also look like <coughs> the wheat seed. But this Zizania, except when they have been plucked out, till the time, they, when they, except they have been ripening up, till the time we could not understand whether these are really the wheat or the standards of uh, called to be like the wicked one. The good seed will be the wheat golden color, but these people will come back to become like a black color when they are ripened up, till the age of the ripened up, the stem the things pertaining to the root, shoot, everything will be the same, except the grain color will, will, will ripen up. As they ripen up, the wheat real one will become like a gold, and this tares or zizania will become like black, and that is very poisonous. So while you are collecting it, so you have to be very careful, so that this poisonous seed should not be involved in that, so they collect it carefully. So who has sown that poisonous seed? The wicked. And every time we open up our mouth and we talk about the word of the Lord of a God, God is witness. So we have to be very careful what God the Father wants us to teach. Not what we teach, not what we know, not what we learned. He wants us to teach what is there in the original exegesis. That's what he said in John 1.18, No man has seen God any time, except the Son who cometh from the bosom of God the Father would expound to you the scriptures. So this ministry of becoming a pastor teacher is a very serious responsible one. So becoming the good one is been sent by God and that will be callous, excellent, beautiful. So good one, what does he do? He would expound to you the scriptures. It is not rushing through the scriptures but expounding to them and making them to understand for such cause God the Father has designed the church even in the past when he was been teaching to Adam and Eve 
and to the people of the Israelites, he taught them the procedure. And now in the church, he teaches the procedure again, what it is every day assembling of the church. You know, dear brethren, you don't obey the word of God. You don't believe the mind of Christ. The greater you try to play gimmicks with the Lord of a God, the greater you try to play mockery with my Christ, the greater you will be paid back. Whether you believe it or not, dear brethren, the greater the time you spend without knowing my Christ, trying to become mockery, trying to say like the way how uh, Saul was rejecting the commandments of the Lord, which we are reading in 1 Samuel chapter 15. It repented. And there Christ was, our Lord of God, heart was graved. And all the time we look from Genesis 6, 6, again Jeremiah 13, 17. Why at least God made man, he repents. And that's what it is, the procedure in every pulpit today as well. Though he has given the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, though he has given for every believer to be rich in the pleroma of Plausius riches in Christ. Though he has given us to dig and take the word of God, though he has given us to formulate our minds so that it could be absolutely triumphant, glorious appearance of the Lord. Gaab, Gaab, August, August. So that everyone could look in your accurate structure, they should be exalted. But dear brethren, you are not able to prove that to Christ. What are the reasons? Because it is not a good seed being taught for you. The good seed will always make you to have happiness, joy in the Lord. No doubt whether they may be men with you or not like Job. You would say, for to me, the way how God the Father has given and has taken back, then too I will praise the Lord. Whether we are with the people or out of the people, whether you have the things with you or don't have the things, you will be always rejoicing in Christ. Because you know that's the happiness you find when you're residing in the tabernacle of the Lord of a God. Therefore, he says over here, the good seed is what the men who come from the kingdom of God will sow. The bad seed, which is not of a quality, which is zizania, though it may appear to be like a quality, though it appears to be like the same one. He says this zizania has been sown by the children of wicked. And what is the wicked ponoras? What they do? They bring toils, they bring annoyings, they bring perils. So they make to cause you to have pain and trouble all the time. So that's what Phonorea is all the time making you to be pressed. And therefore they constantly ask you to get money. Constantly they ask you to pay some sponsoring of the programs. You know, these all things. This is what just in physical standards for you. But it's something far greater than that. So the enemy that sowed is the devil, the work of devil. So you need to be very careful, dear brethren, the preachers who come to preach. Because he also is trying to sow the seed. As the good seed has been sown by the children of God, he's also trying to sow the seed. But people are happy today to obey to the devil's seed. They are so happy and they are so comfortable to sow to the devil's seed. Therefore, they want all the things that which an itching ear can learn. They don't want to carry every day the cross. They don't want to understand the mind of Christ. They don't want to look from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20, 21, the things that could be for us in the Lord. Indeed, in fact, they don't want to learn what exactly is their life. Why they are Christians in the church age? Why they have been called to be still yet alive in the church age? So they're not even ready to look and understand what is the purpose of your life that you're breathing. And why are you and who are you? Why God the Father has kept you still alive? Why he has been still bestowing upon you the grace? Every believer's tongue should confess to the fact that Lord God has triumphed gloriously in their life. Ga'ab, Ga'ab process has taken place in their life. That's what every believer's tongue. Indeed, we know very well in Philippians 2 verses 9 through 11, followed by again Isaiah 45, 12 and 13. 
Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Christ, the Lord of a God. And apart from Him, there is no Lord. We know that. But in every believer's life, He wants Gaib, Gaib to occur. That Christ Jesus, our Lord of a God, has triumphed gloriously in your life. For that cause, He has given us this great time. So that we could enjoy this player of ultimate privileges and to be always in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And come back and learn because particularly in Acts chapter 17, we have three categories of the people. One in Thessalonica, one in Berean and the other one in Athens. And there we find about the people of Berians, you know very well how they are. And even in Athens, they are also in search of God. And the Spirit of the Lord of God fires up the heart of Paul. He goes to search and seek and understand. And he goes to teach them very clearly. To an unknown God, you have written, I'll show you who is that unknown God. God in past time winked at his eyes, but now he has appointed a man to judge. And through Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, if you're not able to have that righteousness of him credited to you, he's going to judge in righteousness. He claims that very clearly there. And there we find the crowd of Barry and what they were, they were the ready mind. And what did they, they went along to search the scripture. Because the world has been filled today with wicked workers. These are not really sent by the Lord. If they were sent by the Lord, Jeremiah 23, 22 teaches to us, they would cause you to stand in the counsel of the word of the Lord, my God. But these people haven't been sent by the Lord. Therefore, they don't make it to stand in the counsel of the Lord. And what is the counsel of the Lord? The counsel of the Lord is very simple. Join as disciples, grow up into grammatias. Very simple, conform to the image of Christ. Very simple, every believer opening up their mouth, they should talk about divine attributes. Very simple, your sanctification. Very simple, none to perish, but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his glory. So here we have these things which he says. The world is nothing but the field. The good man is going to sow the good seed. The wicked man also is trying to sow the seed, but in the form of ravenous wolves they are inside, but outward they appear to be shepherd, sheep. But inside what they are, they are ravenous wolves, whom to devour, whom to eat. Therefore he says in Acts 20.32, I commend you to grace and to the word of the Lord of a God, which is able to build you up. He knows very well after his departure, ravenous wolves will easily enter. And the church, wherewith today it has to be built upon, or the procedure of the building of the church is very simple and very clear. It is very, very true. We have the word of God. If you don't have the mind of Christ or the word of God, you are not able to build up. So it should be like the barren crowd. And you have been strictly warned in the Athens, the way how he was warning them. God has appointed now a man by name Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is going to judge you according to that righteousness. If you don't have that righteousness of the Lord of a God credited to your account, you're gone forever. No matter what have a good deeds, no matter what have a best deeds you might have done, either in the form of visible or invisible, visible in the sense of your idols, invisible in the sense what Christ followed. They say that he followed invisible God, that is no idols. So, dear brethren, if you don't have Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God in you, take it granted, God has appointed a man. He's going to ask you about his righteousness, being credited to your account or not. How do you get it? By faith alone, in Christ alone, not by works. Religion is what it gains you to get by works. But Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God has appointed you not by works, by faith. So now at one end we have all the time even the so-called the Christian evangelism has become marketing strategy. They come up with their gimmicks, they come up with their talks, they come up with each and everything which is absolutely vain and wake. And they try to introduce to you every mannerism of program. But Christ Jesus of the Lord of our God knows only one program. After believing in Christ, what next? Take up your cross every day. Follow to the right path. The teacher is going to train you up in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Don't waste your valuable grace of the Lord. Sincere milk of the word of the Lord of God, which can grow you up. First Peter 2, 1 and 2. If it is not a sincere milk, 
no matter how many days you may drink that milk which is adulterated will not give you that effect it cannot clear your sicknesses in your body you have to take in the sincere milk unadulterated milk and today you are not able to find sincere word of god for you being taught having not the intentions of men to be expounded but clearly the intentions of lord god the holy ghost which has to be taught today are not able to find that in a pulpit which dear brother and you have man man mixing his thoughts and what is the real content of the mind of christ you have lost it long back therefore you cannot rejoice in the lord when the good word is been given the word will set you free when you are free from bondages when you are free from every mannerism of this depressions of mind or having heart heaviness or having your eyes to fall off you know anything what mentioned in Deuteronomy 28 verses 15 through 68 what all the sicknesses in the five cycles of disciplines all those things will be free when you have the word of god in you the word of lord of god is the only rafa being called to be the mixture of the words which can completely pulverize your sickness and make you to be clean and when we look in second kings chapter 13 when the man of god became sick we read that word very specifically he became sick because there weren't enough growing up scribes joining as disciples there weren't enough men coming even to be as disciples that's the sickness people are today counting about the properties of the ministry they are counting about the profits of the ministry they are counting about the gimmicks and plans of the ministry but god the father tomorrow he doesn't ask about your properties about xyz he asks how many disciples were there for you how many disciples how many you strived them to grow up into grammatias fulfilling the will of god the father how many of them were stable men going on again making disciples of all the nations how many of them till to the end stood firm to the word of god how many of them turned back how many of them left how many of them stood how many of them really fought a good fight unto this lord's battle because we have a word over here in exodus 15:3 which says yehova elohim he is a man of war so you don't have any other things to say to talk about <laughs> he says he is man of war <coughs> excuse me <coughs> and his name is yehova verse number 3 and when we find the word he is a man of war it says for us in the pictographical representation where he is going to make disciples he is going to build up a wall of fortification he is going to make up your blood when he is preparing for the word malcam or the word called to be war he is asking you are you been as a disciple that's what the word lamad mantano plus did us call about you have to be learned to know what is the wall of fortification when you are engaged in the lord's battle in ephesians 6 we have been taught about the spiritual warfare which has been given for us as a battle so here also we look the same things again yehova is a man of war he is engaging us to fight the lord's battle he is calling us to fight as a good soldier as he writes in first timothy and whenever he has been engaged in the war he doesn't have to look upon the details of life he says the man who has been equipped for the lord's battle he doesn't look upon the details of life he doesn't care about the details of life as such today people are happy to worry and to look upon the details of life to be number one priority though they are ministers though they make themselves to be the pastor teachers It's a shame that this has been sown by such kind of a evil man. They also look good. They also behave very well, superb. We cannot find out whether they are good or evil. You know the only test how you can find them, the word what they teach. If they don't match to the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, they haven't been sent by the Lord. These are wicked ones. and there is no compromise in this 
as Lord God the Father did not compromise with Moses to go into the land flowing with milk and honey because he said, you did not honor my word in the midst of the people. That's it. Though he was a man known face to face, though he was a man called to be like a, not a prophet who arose, who arose again in the entire Israel like such, where God the Father would speak to him face to face. Though he had such kind of a caliber where he said, Lord, I have spent twice with you, 40 days and 40 nights, yet I want to look upon you. Though this man was been given this privilege and he was been said in comparison to Aaron, Aaron should, cock, should knock and come once, but Moses can enter into the cherubims many times. For him he says, you haven't honored my word. You did not honor my word among the people, so he did not spare him. Not that he ate the rock, as people know upon. That's what eating the rock, disobeying the word. And though now the pulpit demands exegesis, and people would say, who's having time to learn exegesis? Who can teach exegesis? Who can go for exegesis? And you oversee, rather than speaking, you want to hit now. You are also disqualified, dear brethren. So every minister who has been sent by the Lord of our God, as you read that in Ezekiel 3, 11 and 12, as also in Isaiah chapter 6, whom shall I send? The burden and the purpose of the ministry will be only one thing, dear brethren, go and make disciples. Yalak, halak, we read that word. Go and make disciples, no compromisation in that. If your ministry is not making disciples every day, dear brother, and take it granted, you will be out of the line. And God the Father would discipline you for that. So, the people who have been sowed by the devil, they also will look good for you. They also will impress you. They also will make the things for you. Wherewith you can say, what a message it was for us. But he says, the enemy that sowed them is the devil. And what is the word devil for it? It is called over here diabolos, followed by the word esti, that is called diabolos, which is according to the standards of this world, which is world which is going to be slanderous, accuser, and it has been used to said on the part of the devil. So the harvest is the end of the world. So the way how we have been building up your life. Whether you are going to take in the word of God or you're just going to come weekly ones or monthly ones to surrender yourselves. So he says the harvest is going to come. And then in the harvest, which is the end of the world, the reapers are the angels. So as therefore the tares are gathered and burned. Why the tares are gathered and burned? Because the word zizania, they are poison. So today you have to wake up very clearly. Whether the things that you have been listening up Will they cause you to be consumed by fire, like the wood and stubble what you have built up? Or the things what you have been heard, you can be firm enough that these are gold, silver and precious stones. That's what you need to ask your pastor teacher. Because you are coming to listen his words, being appointed and sent by the Lord. And they are here to show you the good seed. And much of the today's Christendom is being ruled over by the teachings of the doctrinal tenets what they practice. And they don't believe the real word of God. They don't want to understand the real mind of Christ. So don't worry, dear brethren, what you sow that you will reap. It's according to your own will. Because God the Father is a gentleman. He doesn't go against your will or volition. He gives you freedom in everything. But at the judgment seat of Christ, He's going to judge you very carefully. So He says, Tears are gathered and burnt in the fire. So shall be the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out his kingdom, out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. You know, the things which offend, the word called to be scandalon, that's a Sanskrit word for scandalizza, that meant to say like a trap moving up and down. So having no firm decision to become as a scribe and yet still able to think that I will believe or not, that's scandalous. These are things which will offend you. And then he says, of them which do iniquity, again the word iniquity is 
anomia, a negative followed by no mass, which is nothing but no norms and standards. The same thing is said in Matthew 7, the, the workers of iniquity, there also the same word, a no mass, not doing according to the will of the word of God. So he says, a no mass. So here also he teaches the same things for us. The first one, scandal leads us. The second one, anomias. So are the people for scandal leads us. They run up and down. They don't want to stick upon the word of God. They don't want to look upon to make disciples. They run up and down. And really, dear brethren, it's a great hour of time now to become the good seed. The callous seed being sent by the Lord of God. Every day you need to sow that good seed. And yet he says over here for us, the people will send for the God, the Son of God will send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom. That is what they're going to just separate. Sul lego, that is to gather in. And what do they separate? They separate out from his kingdom all things anything that is offending you anything that which has done iniquity and shall cast them into the furnace of fire they shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth so in everything dear brethren make sure that you're not going to become an offense to others a scandal leads a trap to others make sure you're going to do that which is of absolute norms and standards in the word of God, not according to your own will, not according to your own mind. So he says, And shall cast them into a furnace of fire, they shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of the Father. Shining as the sun, who the righteous one, Dikayasune, the people who will do according to the will of God. So what do this, they do? They absorb what exactly is the word of God. And the righteous would say, when Lord, when did we do this? The same thing. They will shine like the sun. And shining like the sun is triumphant gloriously in Exodus 15.1. Ga'eb. And that shining forth of the sun is not when we get into the results of the judgment seat of Christ, that confidence what we have right now, that we are having a complete erected structure of Christ in us, being surrendered to the Lord, we are doing nothing but the will of God the Father. And what is the will of God the Father? None to perish, but everyone should come to the epinosis knowledge of the word of God. You know, Moses was knowing the thoughts of the Lord and the congregation looked upon the deeds of the Lord. So knowing comes first, getting acquainted with the word of God comes first. That's why, the, the, that's the reason in Colossians he's emphasizing for us, every man should be made perfect and complete in the thorough knowledge of the word of God. Every man should come to such knowledge in Christ to be made and presented before God the Father, th perfect and complete. For that cause, he says, the word of God, even the mystery doctrine of the church church, which we need to communicate. For that cause, he says, the power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, which operateth in us to produce the things which are according to the will of God. So, dear brother, in everything you look, he wants to make the people to be perfect and complete so that they could shine like the sun. They will be shining. You know, much of the Christendom today, they're able to teach only the first part of the parable, which is the sower of the seed, but about the wheat and tares. They are not able to understand the importance that you will be anything of an offense, that is scandal leads, uh, anything of uh, anomia standards, which is not according to the word of God. He says, you will be cut off. And then where are you going to be put? You'll be put into the lake of fire where there'll be gnashing and wailing of teeth. So the good seed will not make you to become an offense in anything whatsoever the commandments of the Lord of God. He said in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. You know, there you have that work. If you love me, keep my commandments. He goes further to teach for us the importance of these commands. You are my friends, he says. And in everything he is teaching to us the importance. 
not even to let go even small iota or carrera, because he says that in Matthew chapter 5, the one who teaches, and if he's not able to maintain even the least thing, he'll be called worst. Even if you're maintaining the least thing and if you're obeying it and if you're then teaching, then you're being called to be the great. You may say it is negligible to love your enemies, to pray for your enemies, to conform to the image of Christ. You may say it's negligible. What is there in that, you may think? The least things which you neglect, which you say it's not needed, which you can justify yourself, he says, even that I will count. So how to be called great in the kingdom of God? How to be called shining as light luminaries in the Christ work? The logic is very simple. Do not become offense. Do not become into the standards of anomias of this world. And fall for sin, fall for iniquity. Seek and search the things to become triumphant, glorious in the sight of the Lord. Because we have over here in this passage of Exodus 15.1 teaching to us that the Lord hath triumphed gloriously. And then he says, the horse and the rider hath it thrown into the sea. That is what he there in that context of Pharaoh and this army which has been put into the sea. And then he says, strength of me and the melody of me, he is Jehovah. The strength, the O's strength, having your eyes fixed upon the word of God, using the tools of weaponry to dig and take the word of God. And the melody, what he says, because of the tools you have bled in you, and that blood makes you to go back and to think according to the word of God. So word of God becomes your melody, word of God becomes your blood, word of God becomes your thinking pattern. Word of God is the only weapon which makes you to have the thirst more, to learn more and more and dig and take more and more. Tomorrow you may have your translations to be perfected, but tomorrow, dear brother, that doesn't stand good. More word, if you want to have a melody in the, in the work of Lord God the Father, dig in the word in the Hebrew and Greek. Emphasize the truth. You have a lot many lexicons. You have a lot many authors, TDOT, TDNT. You have so many books being coming up. You find that in the PDF drive. Go back and look and take and dig. And understand the importance, teach accurately the word of God in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. For that cause God the Father is going to give you this grace and what purpose you need to have to live in this flesh. The only sole purpose why we need to reside in this flesh is to give a complete honor of triumph and glorious way or August, August or Gaab, Gaab from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 20-21 and once that work is finished, you would never even stay on this earth for even a single millionth of a second. You would go back home and once the work of the Lord of God has been done completely, leaving behind such kind of a great legendary impact to this people. That's what we find over here. For this word, I shall adorn him now way. And the word adorn is nothing but a place of great beauty and comfort where one could reside for a long period of time. That's what he says in Exodus 15 too. My God and I will prepare him an habitation. And my father's God and I will exalt him. But over here when he's saying I will prepare him an habitation that is called as Nave. The same thing we read that in Jeremiah 6 2. Nave the Bach. In comparison to the standards of a woman being with her right man. So now over here we look the way how Nave, which meant to say a long period of time where one loved to reside because of its beauty, because of its comfort. When I've been sown in the good seed of the word of the Lord of a God, you'll have this beauty, Nave. You'll have this comfort. You'll have this great joy. You'll have this great purpose. And that too for a long period of time. As you remember David and he did not go to punish. In First Kings chapter 11, particularly in verse 33 and 34 over the case of dividing the kingdom. He remembered David. Over there in Genesis 26, we find the promise given to Abraham. He did not go to completely destroy the Isaac standards. He remembers for a long period of time. The way how we uplift and keep 
So he says, we shall exalt him. He is my father's God and I will exalt him. It is a lifting up of a something to the standards of a prolific state where for a great amount of offspring to come, the standards of the Lord of a God would abide. You are just thinking to leave behind for you one witness, but God the Father wants to leave behind witness for your offsprings also to come. Such is the way we need to exalt Him for the great grace given unto us. So He says over here, The strength of me and the method of me, he is Jehovah who became Eya, which comes into existence. And he says, He has become my salvation. That is, the munching process of me, what all I have in my eye point, or in my viewpoint of eye. He is my salvation. And this one, when he's mentioning again, L or God, 410 code about Christ, he says that he is a great joy of a weapon to show forth exaltation in Christ. So, the tool which has been given for us to dig and to know the Word of God and to understand the mind of Christ, and when we have been representing Christ and the Word of God in our lives, that will be a great joy. So, he says, this one, the weapon which has been given in Christ, he will be L, that is what 410, referring back to the humanity of my Christ. And he says, I will nava. I will make a place of beauty and comfort where he can reside for a long period of time. You know what will be the life of this journey? You'll have except memories, nothing right. Between right man, right woman, the memories, between parents and children, memories. For a long period of time, there will be a memory of us, a legendary impact. And that memory is what you have been given to give a good place, a great place in the Lord. Every breath of your life, what you are taking, <laughs> every day what God the Father has provided with the provisions, fighting the Lord's battle, you have been called to obey his mandates, to perform his statutes. And in that particular day, what memory you are leaving behind? In every breath of your life, it has to be triumphed gloriously. Ga'eb, ga'eb. It has to be an exaltation of Christ. It has to be an exaltation of God the Father. It has to be growing up from 60 to 100 percent. That's what your scale should be all the time reigning in the Lord. But you go back sometimes to 30 percent like milk. You don't even have a sincere desire to milk the Word of God. Sometimes you don't even eat the bread. Sometimes you forget to eat the strong meat. And you have all your troubles in your mind and you go back once again from 30 to 0. A rolled gold way of life. Hypocritical way of life. What memories God the Father can have on behalf of you on this earth? You know, the way you grieve and squelch and wax and lie and resist Lord God the Holy Ghost. He will remember you for bad. He will remember you for damaging him. He will remember you for the things that you have done evil and wicked to him rather than doing good. If you, had, I'm being, if you have been doing good, you would shine as sun. You would shine as the righteousness of the Lord God reigneth over you. And what for he would remember you, dear brethren? How many simple lessons we learn from the biological life of this life, of life cycle of this life. <coughs> <coughs> you want to be remembered for your memory. We remember the great missionaries in the past who came to give their lives. Eradicating Sati system, William Carey. And great many men who were the foundation of light. And you have in Wikipedia their remembrance, we can find that. And tomorrow, greater than Wikipedia, God the Father has a remembrance about you every day, what have you done? So, Nave of yours, where you want to reside. 
every day if you have been remembering in the Lord by the grace given for you up to what extent you are really growing up up to what extent you are really changing up your things according to the will of God up to what extent you are trying to be that which is Lord's will and Lord's purpose If you have really been in the knowledge of the word of the Lord of a God, Numbers 14.9 would be your attitude. The way when Joshua and Caleb, they tore their clothes and they said to them, Do not rebel against my Lord. The seed what God the Father has given unto us is a holy seed. It's a praiseworthy seed of the Lord. Do not rebel. You know, when I've been properly trained to recite, as to set forth a memory on this earth. But the good seed of the word of the Lord of a God, he would talk these terms. In Numbers 14, 9, the five things we can take it down. First one he says, Yehovah must not be you revolt. So you must not revolt against the Lord, the first thing. The second thing, you must not be fearing about this man. The third thing, this people, they are our bread. That means to say what? The whole purpose why we are going to live is to make these people to understand about Christ. So these are our bread. And the fourth one, so he says, their, their shadow has been departed from over them. That means what? The defense or whatever they had to be as a defense, he departed from them. And then he says, Jehovah is with us and you must not be fearing them. The fifth one. So I've been properly trained, as he said in Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 28 to uh, Moses, saying that you will not go, but Joshua will go. So train him up. So give him Kazakh everyday Bible training. So now while they're still there in the rebellion nature, he teaches to them the characters of a learned person. The attitude, what you can say, many people would love to say about this attitude of a lion. So it is not a big in size like elephant. Or it is not a strong insight like this or like that, but the attitude changes the talk. You can find that in motivational speeches. The first thing what it gets into the mind of a, of a elephant when it looks into lion, it says run away. But lion gets into his mind, it is my lunch or dinner. And that's the attitude. The same thing attitude when we are in God, Joshua teaches to them. They are our bread for us. Don't turn back, don't fear. Already they have lost the strength. They have nothing in them. Your whole Lord of God is with us. Do not fear. And these people, what? They are their lunch. You can get them easily. Don't worry. So he says over here, the first one, rebel not. And every day your memory, you're rebelling against the Lord. The word what he teaches for Nava. In Exodus 15, 2, a long period of time for beauty and comfort where one can reside as a memory, giving him great comfort. And that's what every believer should do. That's what he says. Christ Jesus, O Lord of God, is the beloved Son of God, the Father. Therefore, he has called many sons unto his glory. Hebrews 2, he has crowned us with glory and honor. And that's the privilege of every believer in Christ. It is not just some or the people who would reach this, this, this success in life. It's for everyone. You have been given equal privilege and equal opportunity. The only difference is that you haven't craved unto the Lord of a God to show you the right direction, to show you the right path, to show you the right will. You have spent your life in search of foolish things. You know, if you go back and look, people are happy to become IPS or IAS or having to crack the exams which are of civil services to the greatest. And they think they have achieved a lot many things. They will not give you a thing in heaven. Learning the mind of Christ, conforming to the image of Christ, growing up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, knowing up your life to fear the Lord of a God, having that wisdom of Christ which we read in Job 28, 28, the fear of the Lord of a God is the beginning of the wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. That's what will, will give you the root, true life, the real life, the purpose of this life. So the first thing he says, rebel not against Jehovah. And today, dear brethren, what is that revolt? In your blood, in your head, that which has been pumping in your body, 
you're not getting every thought into captivity for Christ and when you reject to get every thought into captivity for Christ that's the Bible calls you have revolted against the law and today many people are revolting do you think you have all the thoughts being brought into captivity for Christ if it is so then the good seed will be sown in our pulpits there will be no place for evil seed. Everyone would be like a Burian crowd. Everyone would fear about the fear of the Lord of a God that God has appointed a man to judge you in righteousness. A good seed will be sown. Callous, excellent seed which will be sincere milk. Which will in return cause you to edify, which will in return cause you to grow up. Good seed. And yet, dear brethren, every day for what you will be remembered before the Lord. But in written Lamentations 3 we look, This is what I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. Morning by morning, God the Father gets His renovation of His grace upon our lives. Morning by morning, He gets to give us this renovation of grace of life. Morning by morning. He is ready to give us grace. He is going to come to judge us thought by thought. Zephaniah 3 5. Job 7 17 and 18. He wants to get moment by moment in exposition of our truth. And yet, we are not making up our lives to meet that we could be remembered for good in the law. How would you overcome, dear brethren? You know, the things pertaining to your life, the things pertaining to your spiritual standards. You have been given something more, you have been expecting more. And much of the time, if you have been still rebelling, not having your thought, not having your head, not having your blood, in the word of the Lord of a God, then you are rebelling against God. But he says, do not rebel. Surrender everything into Christ, not only by your lips, but by every thought of your deed, so that you will not be fearing them, but rather you will look upon them like the way how the lion looks now into elephant. It doesn't fear the size, it says it is my lunch. So you look upon these people, and he will say then, these are my bread. I have to win them back to Christ. If you haven't rebelled against the Lord of a God, this will be your attitude. Sac like first Timothy two four, which is to go and make which is none to perish, but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his glory, followed by second Peter three nine. Your attitude changes, your thinking changes, you don't have the fear of the world any longer. But when you start to take a back step, when you start to rebel, You're really not going to be left behind for a long time of memory what God the Father wanted you to be. But in return, you will leave behind a memory for that particular day. As Psalm 78, 9 and 10 teaches, they have given them the equipments of warfare, but in the day of battle, they rebelled against me. You'll have that also as a testimony, dear brethren. You'll be remembered for that as Luke 9, 62 teaches. Put his hand and turn back and not worth for the kingdom of God. We'll be remembered for that. <laughs> and you may have in your guilt and remorse to say, no, we'll go now, we'll fight. But the word says they were beaten until Harma. Because when once you rebelled, God the Father says, not the time, wait, I have to check you back again. But you say, no, Lord, we are prepared and are going now to fight. You'll be beaten up till Harma, like the fly. So with God the Father, the strength what he has given, just obey, don't rebel. Be remembered for good. Because he has triumphed gloriously. Ga'eb, ga'eb. He wants in you to form the structure of Christ. He wants to form and look into you your exaltation process of the word. 
so that you can have no rebellion against the Lord, but rather you will be not even having the fear of this people. But you will be looking into the word and you would say, their defense is gone. You know, when you look upon an unbeliever, we look, he's spiritually dead. What all reasoning he has, what all thinking he has, what all uh, cunning fables he plans, we know very well they are nothing because he is spiritually dead. We have with us God the Father, indwelling in us through Lord God the Holy Ghost, and greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world. So we not worry about that. So we look on the fifth point which says for us, Yehovah is with us. When Yehovah, Lord our God, is with us, who can be against us? The same thing is said for them in Romans 8. If God be for us, who can be against us? So in this verse 9, the five principles, number one, rebel not. If you rebel, you fear. If you don't rebel, you are not having fear. You will look unto them, the second, the, the third word, you look unto them as your bread. And you look unto them, when you are looking them unto as a bread, you will say, their defense or whatever they had, the power to back them up, it is God. As we read that in Psalms 119 verse 85, the proud and arrogant have dig pits and kept for us, which is not according to the law. As people today, they fear about every mannerism of necromancy, black magic. You know, Christians, they have that in their mind still. They're not according to the law. They're not according to the word of God. So why you fear them? Throw it out. People fear because they don't love the commandment of the Lord. They rebel against the Lord. Any rebellion against the word of the Lord of God, fear begins in you. Your enemy takes a step. If you obey and perform the word of the Lord of God, there is no rebellion in you. There is no fear of this world. You can look into them and you can say, they are our bread. You can look and you can turn to them. The defense is gone because Jehovah Elohim is with us. And when Jehovah Elohim is with us, why we shall fear that? So this is the training what you get when you have been taking in, in the mind of Christ to triumph and gloriously. And that's an attitude of what Moses was teaching to Joshua. And Joshua speaks of that. And not fear. So he says over here in Exodus 15 too, The Lord is my strength and my song. That will be the song for us. And he is becoming to us the salvation. This one, the El of us, he shall adorn him. That is what we shall nava, a place of beauty and comfort where we reside for a long period of time. And then, Elohim, O Father of me, I shall exalt him. I shall leave behind a great prolific amount of offspring which could be remembered forever in the presence of God the Father. And all these things could be done, dear brethren, only when you are walking in the good seed of the word of the Lord. You need to cross-check whether the seed being sowed is according to the word of the Lord of a God or not. The greater you fail in this time to cross-check in the present Christendom of apostasy, the greater you are an endanger of your own life. Every moment of you should be a memory before my Christ. Every moment of you has been given as a great privilege to represent God the Father, which could lifelong record in the historical pages of the heaven, not on this earth. In the pillar when we will come and be for Christ, the greater we have been said to love upon the standards of becoming our names into the great depths of Satan to understand, as we read the church Titerius, Revelation chapter 2. And you can have the power to rule over the nations. And to rule over the nations, you need to have the attitude, rebel not. And you are not fearing them because they are our bread. Their, de their defense is departed from them. And Jehovah is with us. Why we fear them? So dear brethren, if Lord God should triumph and gloriously August, August, Gaheb, Gaheb, then you should get yourself first erected structure in Christ. You should get yourself after this erected structure in Christ conforming to the perfection of the things pertaining to God the Father, 
And when once you have been performing that, you will have a great life ahead to go and to do the will of God the Father, triumphing gloriously. So dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. So with our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Inaudible to include Lord God the Father in the privacy of the soul. <laughs> that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior. That's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Where with you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry so thorn lagan. Herald the word in season and out of season because the diamond to my witnesses where it have been called. The number one diamond to my witnesses in wearing three, three followed the Bible in our hands. And number two diamond to my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. Infinitely divine Holy Father, help us to become your place for you on this earth so that you could have a long time of joy in us and everything what we could do by rebelling not against the word but obeying and surrendering completely unto the words so that we could be your praise of your glory on this earth in this great redeemed grace of us. Every breath walking in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and performing the will. So, Father, to this extent, we pray, Lord God, the Holy Ghost would enter and challenge us by this message you have given unto us. In Christ's matchless, peerless, precious name, we pray, Father, the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten and challenge us by these words. Amen.